I lost my mom to domestic violence at a very young age. When I lost my mom, Clarence would come with me to the prison to go and minister to my dad and felt like that's what God wanted me to do was to forgive and as hard as that was I did it I visited him and Clarence was right there by my side I love Clarence um, he really is everything that I prayed for I remember I seen this big tall guy like really crying out and worshiping the Lord him and I became very, very close and later wound up getting married. And before we knew it, we started doing ministry in the Union Gospel Mission. We were still healing ourselves, but that was okay because it was raw and it was real ministry for real people. Our ministry was, in a sense, birthed out of pain. My wife uh, lost her mother, you know, and that was a painful experience. It's actually one of the ways we actually came together it was after the death of her mom. And it was through all of that pain that my wife was processing that she was seeking the Lord. And we began to see a healing process uh, in her life and my life that actually began to become Word of Truth International Ministries. There were a lot of hard days. I mean, there, there still are in ministry, you know? That's what made our ministry grow so much is because Clarence and I both were very real. We wanted to walk with people. We wanted them to experience Jesus the way that we experience Him. We welcome people that come in with pain and we love on them right where they are. I think the greatest thing that we can do uh, is model our love and dependency upon God. And when we met Buki and Keisha, uh, we were still fairly young in our marriage at the time, uh, along with me being raised by a single mother, you know, uh, not necessarily having a father in my home growing up. We had to figure things out, so we had a lot of ebb and flow and struggle and communication issues and things that we worked through. And it forced us to seek God and to model that in front of Buki and Keisha to show, look, we got struggles too. Pastor Presley and Athena lead by example in, in everything that they do. The very first couple of times that I got to meet Athena, she shared with me openly her testimony. Pastor Presley says, if you are not able to share your real testimony, then you're not really free. When, when we went through um, the, the adultery, when I went through my adultery and I'm going through this process of identity, um, those two, Clarence and Athena, really stepped in and they became really advocates for the work. They really became a listening ear. They're able to embrace those that most people would, would push away just because of their life experiences. I seen um, Buki and Keisha's life transform. Talking with us, you know, we, we had lots of conversations on our couch. They didn't come and tell me what I needed to do. They encouraged me and gave me scripture. They prayed with me. They supported me. Um, I think at that time, that's when I really realized um, the power of God. It was really transformational. They were really able to help us unpack all of that baggage that we were carrying into our relationship. Because of their openness, because of their honesty, because of their willing to really walk with us for the long haul has then taught us they modeled that process and now has taught us how to do the same thing. And so the pain that my husband and I went through was horrendous, but God was able to really use that pain of and address some deeper rooted issues that I was dealing with and help to ignite a passion in me. I was able to help formalize this thing called dynamic, which which really is the acronym for demonstrating and yielding the necessary attitude to mimic an immaculate Christ. My vision is to embolden leaders to contribute their life work to the world through my consulting business called Dynamic. That is my purpose. So, so Baseball Beyond Borders is a sports-based community development organization that uses baseball as um, a vehicle to advance academic and life outcomes. 
Um, you know, on the field of play, the game of baseball is the only game that you can have success even when you fail. Um, it's a game of failures. You know, three out of ten, you're an all-star. And what you see on the diamond, you'll see guys strike out, you'll see guys make plays, you'll see guys miss balls, you'll see guys not have success, but yet they're still standing and they get another opportunity. And that's what we're trying to teach these kids. It's really about how do we take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of us. But first, how do we even know who we are? It's really not about the wins and losses. It's what we do, it's how we respond. Because tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you're gonna have another opportunity to swing the bat. But it's up for you to take advantage of that. Buki having this vision sitting in him for a while, you know, with his passion for baseball, but it's bigger than baseball. Baseball is the vehicle uh, for him to use Baseball Beyond Borders to mentor kids, but also to bring baseball back uh, to the inner city. As much as it may be about baseball for Buki and for Keisha about, you know, organizational management and strategy, at the end of the day, they're really compassionate about people. They want to help people because they know how God helped them. And so that's what I love about that couple, that they understand that we're in the people business. At the end of the day, we may use sports or we may use business strategies or we may use, you know, relationship coaching. At the end of the day, it still comes down to God's love for humanity, God's love for his creation. They are so, so dear to me because I have seen God's hand at work in their life. And um, they're not supposed to be proud, but I am so godly proud of them. There was a time when Buki wasn't even coming to church. It was just Keisha, you know, and she was holding on to faith. And though he brought her, um, there was a time when he stopped coming. Um, but he came back, and when he came back, he came back strong. And uh, you know, they're leaders in our our church now, and they're doing ministry of their own. And um, they have walked alongside of us and doing great things in the community. And I really. Um, really can't see ministry without him, you know. I wish we had an opportunity to share all the stories that happen on a daily basis uh, within this region. Over the years, people have discovered that they're serving in their communities or they're serving in their churches, but oftentimes you feel alone. So Ken Network, uh, Ken stands for Kingdom and Neighborhoods, and Ken actually created a network uh, that's brought together about 22 leaders, but those leaders are already connected to various people that we want to cultivate and develop and send out and help them to understand who they are as well in Christ so they can be effective wherever they go. If I can get these leaders to see that together we can be great, you have to understand your individual vision and your mission and your core values, but not as a solo act, not in a silo, but together we can have such a great impact. God is doing some amazing work and I just believe in this work. I, I lay my life down every single day because of this work. You know what I mean? When we talk about passion, pain and purpose, this is purpose. You know, when I think about the pain that we've endured, you don't throw that away. You know what I'm saying? When you're enduring the challenges that we face with times, we didn't know how we were gonna pay our rent and God comes through we didn't know how we were gonna, you know, host an event and God comes through. We didn't know how in the world we were gonna start a football league and God comes through and now we're serving over 2,000 kids. God comes through in amazing ways. We're just asking people to partner. Be a partner with us, whether that's through prayer or by giving financially. Matter of fact, come join us. We want you to be a part of this if you feel called you know, and you want to be plugged in. We're not perfect. We struggle. We're still learning, you know, but at the same time, I love the fact that we're learning while doing praxis. We're learning while we're doing it. And I think God blesses us and honors us because we're faithful.